thank you sir hello everyone my name is prakashan and here i am with my friend sarvesh kumar yadav to give a brief of a research work on conceptualization of space settlement and specifically mars colonization this project was undertaken in the guidance of dr sudhir kumar chaturvedi sir by sarvesh kumar yadav himali and me myself prakashan so here let's discuss about the contents of our presentation so first of all we would discuss about the mission objective of this presentation of um, of our mission in this mission objective we would be talking about basically five questions why where who when and what the why is why do we need the space settlement then where can we build it who will build it where will it, when will it be built and what resources would be required to sustain in mars settlement in coming further slides we would be talking about these resources which would be required and the basic technologies the major technologies which could take care of these uh, requirements all right so let's start with first the mission objective so the mission objective of this project was to settle up at least 100 people on the surface of the mars within a uh, space settlement which would be capable of sustaining human life completely self sustainable for a long period of time now like we already know that iss in iss there are astronauts staying but they cannot stay there forever they are staying there just for a short period of time all right so here in this case the settlement would be capable enough to inhabit uh, people for longer period of time so that uh, so to pursue these uh, like long period of time inhabited we need to make sure that all the resources are available available for the astronauts to survive and these uh, resources cannot be sent again and again for uh, fulfilling uh, the requirements these resources cannot be sent again and again from earth so we need to make sure that these resources are being produced in the settlement itself so let's start with the basic questions of a space settlement so why do we need a space settlement so a space settlement will on, will only be the way to curate human life outside earth so this uh, curation could be for space exploration purposes for deep space exploration or maybe to protect uh, human life from an apocalypse on earth all right the second question would be where can we build it so the possible locations which were listed were the polar regions because of the systematic seasonal transformations then it could either be equatorial region near the volcano arcea mons so the arcea mons basically had uh, was believed to be like uh, to have water like water presence there all right and the third would be valles marineris which is also called the grand canyon of the mars and it is about 3000 km long and 8 km 8 km deep so it was believed that once upon a time river used rivers used to flow through this canyon and it is still believed that there may be presence of water in this grand canyon of the mars the next question would be who will build it the construction could either take by a direct involvement of the humans or indirect uh, involvement of the humans if we use robots all right then comes uh, when will it be built the mission starts as soon as the humans are capable to be sent to the mars as soon as we have a launch vehicle capable enough to send uh, to take care of the transportation to and fro from earth to mars and mars to earth we can start the mission and the final question the basic question which we need, which we need to take care of is the what resources would be required to sustain human life in mars settlement so the major resources would which, which would be required to sustain human life would be oxygen obviously water food radiation shielding from the various radiation radiations coming from space then communication systems and, and uh, ai robotics and some more other resources so in coming for the slides we would be talking about how to cater the needs of these resources first of all we would take care about the movement of resources like uh, to and fro from the settlement while the construction phase is going on so for the construction of the settlement we need to send resources from earth to mars and we would require uh, we would require the launch vehicle to come back to earth so that we don't have to waste the launch vehicle again and again for sending the resources while in the construction phase itself so uh, to make sure uh, this financial 
tragedy doesn't occur we need to make sure uh, we need to develop a launch vehicle and a spacecraft which is completely 100% reusable all right except for the fuel obviously so and also it should have high payload capacity so that we can reduce the mission cost as to as low as possible so taking care of these things there are few technology which are under development and some which are under testing phases the technology which are under testing phases one of them is saver engine the so saver stands for space air breathing rocket engine which can be used in various launch vehicles such as single uh, stage to orbit rockets so when these saver engines are combined with booster stage these are capable enough to carry us to the mars and come back as well all right so some more technologies uh, like we would surely we need we would surely be needed to reduce the time period uh from like for going and coming back from mars it takes a, a very long time for now so we need to reduce it for uh, coming like making this journey time less than 6 months so this uh, reduction in the time period the journey time could be taken care by the technologies which are under development such as the vasmer engine uh, which is a plasma plume engine and the nuclear rocket further we have we would be discussing about the water supply to the settlement which would be dis, uh, described by sarvesh sarvesh please hello everyone uh, am i audible yes you are okay so uh, as, as we all know water is vital for all known forms of life even though it provides no calories or any organic nutrients that is why our settlement needs to be self sufficient and needs to be equipped with various technologies in order to produce water and most importantly to recycle it here we are going to discuss few processes for the same so uh, the first process we are going to talk about is vapor compression distillation vapor compression is a distillation process where evaporation of uh, waste water is obtained by the application of heat delivered by the compressed vapor the effect of compressing water vapor is obtained by means of an electrically driven mechanical centrifugal compressor the waste water is evaporated at some atmospheric sub atmospheric pressure on some side of the heat transfer surface and on the opposite side it will uh, condense into fresh water and which is collected and extracted as water product so the benefits of using these techniques are the first one is lowest overall water production cost the second one is low specific energy consumption third one is simple raw water pre treatment the fourth one is 25 the this is one of the most important one that is 25 years economical life so uh, the sub processes include in this method are shown here and the first one is uh, particulate filtration adsorption ion exchange heterogeneous catalytic oxidation membrane based gas liquid separator coming to the next slide our second method is osmosis water recovery system well osmosis is a process by which molecules of a solvent tend to pass through a semi permeable membrane from a less concentrated solution into a more concentrated one this osmosis mm. water recovery mm. system consists of for uh, of forward and reverse osmosis people often confuse reverse osmosis and forward osmosis as well if you think of just osmosis it's the use of semi permeable barrier or membrane and water diffuses across the membrane from a lower concentration to a higher concentration so that both sides are at equilibrium that what osmosis is and that's what forward osmosis is called reverse osmosis use the same semi permeable bar barrier or membrane but instead of allowing fresh water or lower waste water to move across a higher concentration to dilute that side you do the opposite you have to overcome that osmosis pressure by using hydraulic pressure to essentially force water through the membrane leaving the salt behind or the waste behind using this process the recovery rate of the water is approximately 95% which is quite high coming to the ninth slide our next method is to use reverse electrolysis to combine hydrogen and oxygen and allow to react together it is opposite of electrolysis of water where we break down the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen itself but uh, here we will do the opposite this reverse reaction needs an energy input which is why it is also called endothermic reaction next slide will uh, prakar will talk about the next slide all right so now talking about the regular supply of oxygen to the settlement and also for producing the water so this uh, regular supply of oxygen can be taken care by two processes one process would be the natural photosynthesis 
which would be taken care by the plants which we would be growing in the settlement. Uh, the process would be shown in the further slides. And also the oxygen generation would take place by the use of process also known as artificial photosynthesis. So this artificial photosynthesis is basically performed by chem a chain of chemical reactions by using high, high intensity uh, sun rays, like solar rays. And that solar rays is used to break down the carbon dioxide molecules into carbon monoxide and oxygen atoms and further break down by supplying more further and in high intensity of solar rays into carbon and oxygen. And then the hydrogen is combined with carbon and oxygen to produce water or this oxygen molecules could directly be released in the air to produce oxygen. So here, using these three pots, we can use, we can produce multiple resources such as oxygen, biofuel. We can also place solar panels on the top of these three pots, which would help in production of electricity, et cetera. So here we talked about the supply of oxygen. Here we would talk about the, like, how these plants would be grown, which would be supplying oxygen through natural photosynthesis. So we would be using a technique known as hydroponics technique. So the hydroponics technique is basically a technique in which we do the gardening without soil. In this method, we supply the nutrients and all the uh, elements which are required for have, like healthy generation and healthy growth of the plants through water. So a water is water is pumped to the pipes in which the, or the tanks in which the plants are grown. The roots absorb these and the nutrients from the water itself, and the water is then transported back to the uh, supplementary tank in which the nutrients uh, nutrients are again embedded. So it is a closed loop cycle, and thus a lot of water could be saved, and a plantation could also be done in a better better way. And also to adjust, to monitor the pH levels of this water, there are various sensors and uh, instruments working on the same. Further, we will be talking about radiation shielding of the settlement, which would be described by Sarvesh. Okay, so uh, as we are planning for Mars colonization, we should know that Mars surface receives more radiation than the Earth, but still blocks a considerable amount of radiation. Radiation exposure on the surface is 30 microsieverts per hour. If the settler spends on average three hours every day outside the habitat, their individual exposure adds up to 11 millisieverts per year. In space, we have majorly three types of radiation that can hinder the idea of settling a colony on the Mars. And those are CGRs, that is cosmic galactic rays. The second one is solar corona or the solar mass ejection. And the third one is UV rays. Yes, UV rays are also the form of radiation. One radiation pro uh, production method is uh, passive shielding. A passive sh radiation shield is a material that is placed between a radiation source and a radio sensitive target designed to absorb the radiation before it reaches the target. A simple example is a patient wearing a lead apron uh, over his or her vital organs while being exposed to x-rays at the hospitals. In space, passive radiation shielding is more complicated than it sounds because the variations in particle composition and energy spectra makes it very difficult to develop a catch called shield. For long-term human-rated missions, the best material choice for passive radiation shielding tends to be a multi-purpose, hydrogen-rich, and have a small atomic mass. The settlement can be protected from such radiations using a multi-layer radiation shield, which is an example of passive shielding. That comprises layer of polythene plastic, that is RFX1, electrostatic radiation shield and other hydrogen rich material as an outermost layer of the structure and by building a dome like structure over whole settlement. Coming to the next slide, we're going to talk about the communication system. Well, the distance between the earth and the Mars is approximately 342 million kilometers or 2.27 astronomical unit. Here, maintaining the communication is very challenging task as it takes 20 minutes for a signal to transmit from earth to Mars or vice versa. That is why using a state-of-the-art communication module is very important. Hence, we are proposing deep space communication system for deep space programs. This technique is very much reliable for deep space mission with spacecraft and with uh, fixed objects as well. To send commands or software updates, track location and receive telemetry, images and scientific data. It operates on the frequency, frequency greater than three terahertz and that is way too high. Coming to the next slide, 
Uh, as we are planning to settle on Mars, artificial intelligence and automation will play a key role in ensuring future astronauts on Mars can safely perform their mission. Not only that, but the future of space exploration will heavily rely on software systems, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to predict conditions, object movements, and make the technology we have spent so many years developing gather more information in less time. Let's take a look at some of the ways AI and ML will play a role in the future of space exploration and settlement. AI provides a series of techniques that enable system to mimic some form of intelligence to complete tasks, such as performing data analysis or system functions. They can predict the space whether AI can automate the control systems of settlement. Though AI machines can respond to the sensory data they gather and make decisions on their own, allowing them to adapt to environments and situations. Next slide, please. Here we are going to talk about the thermal control systems. Well, uh, another high-tech insulator incorporates micro-encapsulated phase change material. These are also microscopic balls, but they are filled with chemicals that can change phase, that is, go from solid to liquid and back depending on the temperature. NASA researchers developed them for use in astronaut glove line. When a person's body temperature rises, the material absorbs the heat. When it drops, the material gives off the heat providing the warmth. Micro-encapsulated phase change material is way easy in insulation and also durable for long duration. In the final thermal control module, the layered micro-encapsulated material is also absolutely great. Uh, it can balance temperature as human requirement. The extra heat is uh, in the settlement should also be released time to time through a low T thermal management system. Coming to the next slide. These are the references we use to make this presentation and that brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you so much for your interest and your undivided attention. Thank you again.